Hello and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. Today we'll be looking at video game comic book adaptations. When a game series becomes popular, it will almost inevitably become a fully fledged franchise that spans toys and other forms of media, whether it be film, television, or even comic books. The Super Mario franchise is of course no exception. Mario has spawned numerous cartoon series, a Hollywood movie with another one reportedly on the way, and hundreds of comic books. However, we're going to be talking about one perhaps lesser known book. We've previously mentioned IQ, a company created by Nintendo and Dr. Wei Yen to circumnavigate the Chinese video game console ban. According to Chinese Nintendo on Twitter, the IQ version of the Game Boy Advance SP came bundled with a CD-ROM. In the data of this disc is a file named IQ Reader with no extension. Checking the file's data reveals that this is actually a ROM for a Game Boy Advance cartridge, and by giving the file the extension .gba and running it through an emulator or flash cartridge, it is revealed to be a reader application for the Game Boy Advance. By booting the ROM, the player can read an article written by Dr. Wei Yen himself, as well as a 45-page Super Mario comic entirely written in Mandarin. The comic is a first chapter in a series that seemingly was never released. In Mario's Great Adventure, Toad tells Mario and Luigi that Peach has built a museum and baked a cake in Mario's honor. Then, a bob -omb explodes, distracting Toad and the brothers. Bowser swoops in and kidnaps the princess, and Mario must fight off a horde of Goombas and a piranha plant. Toad then explains that there are five stars of power in the universe, and together they need to collect them all to defeat Bowser and save Princess Peach. The team travels to Yoshi's Island in search of the next star. Here they meet Yoshi, and Toad gives a brief presentation explaining that Yoshis are native to the island, are very intelligent, like fruit, and are friendly to people. After a little more hijinks, the party learns from a block that Little Bowser has already stolen the star from the island, and Yoshi can lead them to the Happy Tree to help them find it. The comic features some cultural humor, like a joke about how much rice Yoshi can eat, a joke about drinking tea, and the typical slapstick of Eastern cartoons, such as Peach smashing Mario into the ground for not paying enough attention to her, then quickly returning to her sweet demeanor. There is also a very meta joke in which Peach shows Mario a framed image of the first time he saved her. This is clearly a still from the very start of the first Super Mario Bros. game. She then explains that someone made the adventure into a game, and it has sold 40 million copies. An oddity that we found when looking through the ROM's data is sprites from Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, though they don't appear to be used anywhere within the reader application itself. The Final Fantasy series is another franchise which has spawned many spin-offs. At one stage, the series was even set to receive its own line of comics by Disney. The company made plans to produce four issues of a comic book series based on the franchise, with several of today's popular comic book creators working on the project. Writer Kurt Busiek, artist Del Barras, and all-round badman Mike Minula, the creator of Hellboy. Plans began in 1992 during a period when the comic book industry was booming. At the time, Disney had created its own printing company, Hollywood Comics, mostly consisting of adaptations. Kurt Busiek said that he wrote the whole script for the entire four-issue run that was planned, with at least two of those issues being penciled by Ballas and four completed cover illustrations finished by Minula. Advertisements for the series appeared within other issues released by Hollywood Comics in 1992, but with the studio closing its doors in 1993, the series never saw a commercial release. Busiek commented on the project several years later. He wrote, I did a story outline, and the people at Squaresoft liked it a lot, but said, uh, well, this is good, but we're about to do a new version of the game. Can you revise it to be about Final Fantasy II instead? It required a top-to-toe restart, because the characters in Final Fantasy were foot sloggers, ordinary soldiers, and adventurers, while the characters in FF2 were princes and leaders and such, which makes a whole different kind of story. But yes, it was based on Final Fantasy II, though Del Barras' interpretation of Japanese design maintained basic designs, but spun it into a very, very mainstream American style. It's worth noting that when Busiek refers to Final Fantasy II, he is actually talking about the original Final Fantasy IV, which was released in America under a different number at the time. Another comic book series that was halted while in production was Star Raiders, based on the 1979 Atari game of the same name. Written by Elliot S. Magan, who is known for being the lead writer of the Superman comics in the 1970s, and painted by Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, who is also known for his work with DC. 
The limited comic was commissioned as a series of inserts for the game, and would span 120 pages. However, due to the American video game crash of 1983, Atari had to cancel this deal. With 40 pages already finished, DC decided to commission 20 more and release it as a 60-page graphic novel and use it to launch DC's graphic novel series. And now for this episode's random piece of trivia. Today we're talking about the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. In the boss fight with Tiny in Crash Bandicoot Warped, if the player stands on the top left corner of the arena as the lions are coming out, the audience will start throwing cheese at them. This is a reference to an exploit in the original version of the game where the player could hide in the corner to avoid damage. That's all for today, but did you know this show is also supported by Patreon? You probably did by now. Well, these lovely spicy little biscuits on screen <laughs> help us out each month. Maybe you could too. As usual, we'd like to give an extra special thank you to our top patrons. Devin Sloan, Getzaberry, Chris Ingersoll, Chad Barnan, Hector I. Murillo, Ya Boy Beowulf, Straight Up Yuri, Pandion, Super AJS, Yume the Palico, T Kazoo, Era1355, Phantom Sonic, the Natch, The Three Master Gamers, Max of Few Trades, Robert Cox, Petite Mew, Paul White the Second, 32232232, Nesta Delion the Third, Jordan Ferrari, Vitas Varnas, Boreas Bear, Maximilian Summers, and Matthias. Don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with our future videos. Hit the bell if you really want to see them all the time. And, uh, everybody's going to the disco party.